Hey guys, so I want to give a quick apology if I found if I sound more stupid than normal, but uh, I just woke up and I wanted to get this thing done out of the way, you know, before I go to work. So my apologies in advance, but I'll try to make this as clear as possible. So thankfully I have um, pretty good editing skills, so hopefully I can make myself sound smarter than I actually am. So yeah. <laughs> So one day as I was just, you know, out having fun and then for whatever reason, my mind started thinking about work and I started thinking about ways to make an easy Powerball sphere. And uh, originally I had a different plan, but towards the end I came up with this method and uh, actually I like the results of this better. As you can see, you know, you got a sphere that's coming from an angle, you got motion blur and it's going off into the distance in uh, Z space, right, in After Effects. And uh, this looks pretty fucking awesome. The thing that was important to me was one, you know, obviously I wanted to look good, uh, but another thing that was important to me was I wanted to be able to be in manageable in 3D space, right? So if you were doing motion track, then it was very important for me to be able to, like, you know, say you have like a camera tracking data, then you, you know, pretty much put this in your scene, and then it'll be a match move perfectly, right? So as you can see here, pretty much I have a gnaw and like, you know, and it's you know it's movable in 3D space. All right, so I'm in a uh, new After Effects file here, so I can start from scratch. Let's see, let's create a new composition. Call this Powerball. And yeah, it's 10 seconds long is fine. Let's see, so I'm going to go to new, create a solid. I'll just name this ball texture. Hit OK. Now, I've got effects. And you want to look for fractal noise. Dump that guy, and then you know you get your fractal design. So uh, let's go to dynamic twist. Uh, let's see, invert it. Just mess around with the contrast till you get something that you like. Yeah, that looks good. Um, animate the evolution. I'm gonna go Alt, click on the evolution clock here. I'm gonna type in. Oops. Let's get rid of this crap. Time, time, and let's put uh, 300. So there you go. So we got an animation going. All right. So once we have that going, go to effects and look for CC sphere. It's right here. All right. So. Want to make sure it looks evenly lit. Let's go to the shading, the diffuse, drop it down to zero, the specular down to zero, and ambient up to a hundred. All right, all right, cool stuff. So we got our sphere here, right? Thing with the sphere is, if you notice, this really is no Z space. You know, you can offset it X and Y. And you know, there's no Z space, and but um, I actually I remember I watched a tutorial by I think it was Final Cut Keen on how to pretty much animate a, um, a 2D image to ang orient itself towards a camera. That way it appears to be 3D. So that's gonna be the trick here for today. So we can right click and make a new camera. So name camera I don't know 35 mm. I usually use the 35 millimeter because I don't know shit about cameras. So you, know, you got a sign here, da 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 da. Yeah, sure. All right. So before you start messing around with uh, any orientations and crap like that, create a new knot. And this one I like to rename it to World Knot. Which is easier to like enemy stuff with knobs, right? So let's put the camera in the bottom, pick whip the ball texture to the knob, you know, and make both of them into 3D objects. Perfect. All right, so when you create the new camera, there's two things. One, you don't want to move the camera. And also, if you are going to motion track something, obviously, when you motion track something, it's going to create a camera for you. So you don't want to mess with the camera, leave the camera where it's at. But you know when you move, if you want to move a sphere around, you use the knot and with the sphere, and you pick whip it to like the world knot with the camera. As you can see, pretty much you know you move the knot around, and pretty much it 
it looks like a 2D image because it is, right? So select your ball texture, go to layer, go down to transform. Then you go to orientation, no, auto orientation. Then you go to orient towards camera, hit OK. So now pretty much, you know, wherever you move the knob, if you rotate it, pretty much the sphere, it stays in place because it's being oriented towards the, the camera. So this is important because if there's any type of parallax or whatever, pretty much the, you know, if you were to animate this, as you can see, pretty much this is the border of the image for the ball texture. So as you can see, pretty much like the, you know, the image is adjusting itself to maintain like the, the perspective of the sphere, right? So that's really cool. All right, so now they got everything set up, here comes the fun part. Um, I'm not going to mess with this too much because, you know, I figure you guys can you know, do whatever you want in this case, but... All right, cool stuff. So now that we got our fractal noise CC sphere here, and also we got like uh, the auto orient feature towards the camera setup. So one thing you want to do is pretty much you want to create a new composition, right? Just leave the fractal noise in the CC sphere inside of this solid, but you want to pre-compose it. So pre-compose this. Well, texture one, uh, move all attributes to new composition. Uh, let's open it. Hit OK. So right click on the composition here go to composition settings and we want to make this big to let's say 2000 okay go back to powerball and as you can see you know we got a big image now the reason why we did that is for this reason for color i like to use the free plugin from my video copilot the, the vibrance so put that in there let's make this a nice blue Okay, that's fine. Let me get in there closer. And also I like to use a <clears throat> let's just say CC radio flash burr. I'll just go brightest and uh, just exaggerate. I mean it's pretty big, but as you can see the light beams are you know re are extending past the seven twenty P composition that I have here, right? But <clears throat> Because we made the ball texture here bigger than a thousand than the 720p. The cool thing about that is, so if we were to move like in Z space, oh yeah, let's not forget to uh, make the pre-composition 3D. Pick whip it again. So now if we move this into 3D space, as you can see, pretty much the beams they stay in place. You know, obviously once you you know move in Z, Z space too much, you know you're gonna get clipping. So you can make this bigger or Obviously, just reduce like the light beams. You know, I just made it big to make an example, but obviously you don't want it too big. So, yeah, you want to make your composition a little bit bigger. That way, you have leave room for like the light beams to extend. Obviously, that is too much, but what I like to do is click on it, go to edit, duplicate the first one. Let's see, get rid of the radio fast blur. The second one, I'm gonna solo it. So it reduces the zoom amount roughly there that looks good let's get our curves I'm gonna put the curves before the radio fast burn pretty much I'm gonna compress the blacks that way pretty much the only thing that's left is the bright area so we can have some the light beams extend from like the bright areas there all right and then hit screen So you can mess with this a bit more. Let's see, make it brighter. There you go. Let's see, I'm gonna rename this to I don't know. Light beams. Yeah, we got our light beams. We've got our texture, you know. And like I said, I'm not gonna mess with the colors too much. Pretty much what I wanted to show you is how to make a you know 3D sphere, you know, and be manageable in 3D space, right? With a null. So. Now with the knob, pretty much, you know, you can go in Z space, move wherever you want. All right, so like I said, I want to like have a sphere that's manageable in 3D space. So this is really cool, and you know, since the the fractal noise is pretty much, you know, uh, being animated, you know, you get some cool little like you know fractal movement going on. So now the cool thing about this method as well is like say. You like I showed you in the beginning, uh, let's see, let's move it closer to like towards the camera. You know, off screen right there. 
keyframe that. Let's go towards, uh, say over here, Z space here. You can grab the null if you want. And the cool thing about this is pretty much it also, you can activate the, um, the motion blur. And you know, there you go, you got some motion blur going on. And yeah, there you go. Uh, if you feel like you need some more motion blur, what you can do is pretty much uh, right click on the composition tab here, go to composition settings, go to advance and the shadow ang angle. Well, actually, usually this is 180. Yep. But uh, that's you know default, but I increased it just to you know have more of a motion blur. So I don't know, I increased that to say 240. That pretty much would increase the motion blur if you feel that you know you don't have enough. But <clears throat> yeah, you can mess with that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You know. You know, like I said, you can mess around with like the colors and glows and do whatever the hell you want. But um, like I said, I just wanted to show you how to make a quick parabola sphere and you know be matchable in 3D space. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, hope you have fun with this. So you know, if you want to motion track somebody's hand, you know, you just can do that in Mocha or you can do it here in After Effects, and then pretty much you know, uh, you create a new knob. With the tracking data, then you just parent this null to that tracking data, and you know pretty much you have a good you know motion track sphere, right? So, all right, that's all I got for you. I hope this guy, hope you guys learned something from this and had fun. So, yeah, please leave a like, comment, and if you guys know of any forums or you know chat rooms or whatever that uh, may benefit from this tutorial, you know, please feel free to share it. And, you know, help me out, and uh, yep, you guys take care, peace.